What's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm so excited because I'm gonna be working on this glorious head of hair that needs a color correction. So we're gonna be attempting to take out her really grown out dimensional gray that she has going on and then some old color highlights. Honestly, I don't really know what she has on the ends of her hair, but we're gonna figure that out today and we're gonna try to get her to a dimensional white highlighted blonde. So that's ultimately the goal here. I'm gonna take you on this color correction journey with me because this is a doozy, let me tell you. It looks like it could be simple, but it in fact is not. Before we jump right into this hair tutorial, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Now let's go ahead and get started. Now before we jump right into this hair tutorial, I have to tell you this client actually found me from YouTube, which was super exciting that she watched my videos and she liked this white tone that we achieved. And unfortunately, this look is a full on bleach and tone. And I think what she was really wanting was some highlights. So that's kind of what we decided on doing today. Again, this is a correction at best. So let's go ahead and jump right in to her full on before shot so you can see for yourself exactly how much work this was. As you can see, she has a lot of roots going on and she's naturally pretty dark here. I would say she's living in that level, natural level six, but she has about 50% gray towards the top, maybe even some areas 75% gray, and then sprinkled with some 25% gray. So she's got lots of different types of patches going on and super warm ends. Her biggest complaint was that she's been going to the hairstylist and for some reason or another, they cannot remove this brassy yellow tone that she's got going on and I think kind of what I was gathering from her consultation because honestly she loved that bleach and tone look but she also liked the look of the dimension from highlight pictures that she had shown me so I decided to go in with this back-to-back -back baby light technique in order to remove a lot of these yellow tones as well as create a blend so we can get rid of this line of demarcation going on. Now I'm keeping this application as simple as possible, even though I am doing back to back baby lights. This means I'm going to be taking down a slice and then highlighting right on top of that with this Dreamweaver comb. So this is very little hair in between. Now I have a confession to make. I am totally kicking myself by not really paying attention to the key thing that she told me in the consultation, which I actually just told you, which is her hairstylist was not able to remove this yellow tone going on on the end. So that was a huge indicator for me that I did not pay attention to during the consultation that I should have prepped her hair with a hard water treatment or even at best a Malibu crystal gel treatment. I always do that. And for some reason or another, I did not. So you'll see as I'm working through this platinum card baby light, you're going to see that I have a lot of yellow to fight through. So that is just an added tip. I would have used the crystal gel from Malibu before I started the service. For my lightener of choice, I'm using Kenra Professional Beyond Bond Lightener with 20 volume developer. I'm using this lightener because I like the bond technology. It's gonna give me the protection I need. And since it's gonna take me a minute to add in all of these foils, I like a lightener that's gonna give me the protection. So once I have those two quadrants in the back completely foiled up, I'm now gonna marry these sections together. So that way I can just kind of work from side to side at this point. So everything that's on her head is completely horizontal. I cannot stress that enough. Anytime you are wanting a blanket coverage or you're doing a correction, you want the best blend possible, horizontal is going to be your best friend. Also, complete side note here, I am taking pretty wide sections and I was trying to get real creative with using these Framar traditional sized foils and I was epically failing at breaking out of my shell and using these super wide foils. So basically, I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. <laughs> so I decided to just go right on back to using the smaller foils because I just realized I like I like control. I like to control my section as much as possible. And when I am losing control of my section, I feel like she's not a clean highlight. 
Anyways, let me know down below in the comments if you are a control freak as much as I am when it comes to your sectioning or are you just kind of like a free form type of highlighter and you don't care how wide your foils are. Anyways, I basically went back to going in my quadrant here. So I don't like to work in spaces that are wider than basically a peace sign for myself. That's the old school way of foiling and I just find that it works best for me. But everything here is either horizontal, slightly diagonal, and then I always finish back to horizontal. Now it's really important to understand your foil position and your foil position is going to determine the type of effect that you're gonna create. I am hosting a class on June 12th of 2023. So if you want to take advantage of the few in-person hands-on classes that I'm offering, you're not going to want to miss this class. So all of the links to all of my in-person education as well as my courses, you can find in the description of this video. Now that I have the entire back foiled up, I'm going to move on to the front section. But here's a really good view of my entire placement, plus that little weird thingy in the middle. I don't know what the hell, like I said, what I was doing. So right here on the front hairline, I typically like to start unless the hair is super fragile. It is not on hers. And plus I'm using that Beyond Bond Lightener. But I am going to go in with a diagonal section or something that's more along parallel with her hairline. Now I know you can see that I have a little bit of lightener on her skin. There is no hair living behind this. So this is not going to bleed because there's nothing to bleed onto. This is literally like a slice right here on this front hairline. I find that going this blonde, most people that want to be this platinum of blonde, I end up just kind of taking out a good half inch of a sliver and just slicing that completely blonde right there. And then from here, I'm taking diagonal forward sections. Now there is a difference between diagonal back and diagonal forward. I actually have another hair tutorial that's super old on my channel. I'm actually going to link that video as well in this video. So that way you can really understand the foil placement. I can't stress that enough. It makes such a huge difference, even when we're doing something so blended like this. Another little added tip here is that you will notice that on some of these pieces, I am pulling the lightener all the way through and sometimes I'm just kind of bringing it halfway down. The part that's kind of determining that for me is you can see there's some like really dark pieces kind of going on on the ends and that's why I'm choosing to just go ahead and pull it through. And then you're going to see a little bit later when we do our foil pull, I'm then going to add even more lightener because that yellow just was not budging. So once I got both sides completely applied, I'm now finishing this very top section, still taking the same type of back to back platinum card baby lights throughout. But she was a little bit blonder here. So I did leave her ends out a more so on this top section. This took me well over an hour to apply I would probably say an hour and a half. So that's how long they've been sitting in the back. And now that this has been going on, I have been periodically checking the back foils, but I was using 20 volume. It is a bond building type of lightener. I'm not too concerned with it. I've used it so many times. Her hair was in great condition. From here, I'm using my Framar bleach blenders. These are actually really great for just removing lightener. When I feel like the lightener is done, I simply just wipe it clean off and let it dry out. I do not wet my lightener. That's a huge tip. If you do wet your lightener, you're just going to continue to allow it to process. And in order for it to stop, the best way about it is to just let it dry out because once the lightener is dried out, it's not going to keep working. This is a point where I was actually really excited. I loved the amount of lift we got, but like I mentioned, those ends, the, the hair that was left out still was really yellow. So I am going to mitigate that, but even with what I'm about to do next, okay, because I didn't pull the lightener through all of the ends. I thought it was just going to be a simple like little touch of lightener on the ends and it was going to be fixed, but that is not what happened in this appointment. So unfortunately I couldn't get her white, white, like we originally had planned. Once the back was completely done processing, I took her back to the shampoo bowl. I rinsed that out and did a little shampoo as well. 
And now I'm prepping her with K18 because I'm getting ready to apply more lightener onto her ends. You can see how vibrantly yellow they are. They just are super, almost kind of have this slight orange cast to them. And in order for me to get a white toner shade, we need to really try to cut through this as much as possible. While I was waiting for the front hair to process, I went ahead and mixed up Kenra Professional Clay Lightener 1 to 1 with 10 volume developer. That's going to give you the maximum amount of strength out of this lightener. Anytime you are trying to decide how strong something is, just remember all of your ammonia or the product or ingredient that's making your lightener actually work is in the powder or it's in the tube. It's not necessarily your developer. So your developer is just kind of like the driver there. And since I am doing a wet balayage, I just thought 10 volume was going to be the best option since we just put on lightener and her, it was on her hair for such a long time. So I obviously need to be really careful, but this was just used as an additional tool to create more blend than what we achieved just with that platinum card baby light. This is just to try to bump those ends as much as possible. So I'm just going section by section in the back and being really careful here. But overall, I like the blend so far that we got going on on the top. However, once this is done processing, I am gonna walk you through something even more advanced to blend in the line of demarcation between the highlight and that natural hair and the gray hair and all of the different colors she has kind of going on. We are doing a full on makeover on this hair. This is a pretty big appointment here, but this is not an appointment that we would repeat the same steps again and again. This is a one and done. And then from here on out, it's all about the maintenance. Okay, here is a little peeky peek of one of the last sections I did. I can definitely tell we need to let that bake a little longer. This one looks pretty good. Still need to let that bake, but these side sections, this is what it should look like when you know it's done. It needs to be a nice level 9, 10. That's a 10. So we're gonna take her back to the shampoo bowl and start rinsing out this bad boy. Once the foils were removed and I shampooed it, this is the freaking canvas I have. I added some more lightener on the ends to try to budget, but yellow, yellow, yellow. This is what's telling me hard water treatment, you guys. I should have done this hard water treatment beforehand. And I did one after the fact, but the damage was done. I basically told her next appointment, we're going to do a hard water treatment and then we'll do a little bit more lifting and see what we can do after the fact. And this is just like a huge little reminder. You know, I need to remember those key things. Hard when water says, minerals. You know, I mean, my hair products. And it just I mean, it. Like, it can make such She's a probably got a hard water situation going so on this was, at her home. Again, a little learning lesson that I should just have really paid attention and did what I normally do when I have a new client, which is prep the hair with Malibu C Pro products. It's just a given. But anyways past this fact okay like let's say this is realistic real life client in my chair I now need to blend this line of demarcation so what I'm using on her is Kenner Professional Studio Stylist Express I'm using straight up nine ash on her equal parts with 10 volume developer I'm not looking for a lot of lift and this Studio Stylist Express is a 10 minute permanent hair coloring system and I love applying it onto damp hair as a base break lift and tone in just 10 minutes, I'm like absolutely obsessed with SSE. As I'm getting the roots on, because I want this all to kind of process at the same time, plus I this SSE does work in just 10 minutes. I'm also using rapid toner, which works in five minutes or less. So I'm blending that right into Demi Permanent, Diamond Frost, and equal parts of VP and equal parts of SV rapid toner. So it's giving me that violet pearl with the silver violet tone and the diamond frost is kind of like the sheer iridescent finish. And I'm blending that all in together. And this is how we were able to get this beautiful seamless end result and a ton of control with all of that slightly orange pigment we had going on. 
Now, this definitely was no easy, simple tone, and toning hair is one of the most difficult things to master. And if you want to learn more about how to tone hair, I do have the Ultimate Toner Guidebook, which comes with nine pages of toning tips, six mini videos, and a PDF of over 150 toner formulas. And if you want to learn more about the Ultimate Toner Guidebook, it is a super low affordable price. You want to check out the link down below in the description. Here is a little glimpse of it dry indoors. Now this is really important for me to show because it does look totally different indoors versus outside. But I absolutely love the blend that we got at the root area. I think we got to a really great place for our first session. I did explain to her that the next time she comes in, we're basically going to pick apart the little pieces that I wasn't able to put into a foil and then just try to lift it. And that was the best way that we could really go about this in order for her to maintain the dimension that she likes, but also kind of giving this illusion of that bleach and tone type of effect that she wants. Here's what it looks like outside in natural indirect light. You can see a lot of those cooler tones kind of popping off in the light. And that's why I like to show the difference between indoor and outdoor. And it's really important for you to show your client that as well, because it makes a huge difference of what it looks like inside. Now, I am so excited actually with this end result. I thought it came out really beautiful. I was a little bummed that we couldn't get her to that true white shade, but lesson learned. Gotta do that hard water treatment before you even get started. It's gonna be such a lifesaver for you. And actually she did come in for a second appointment six weeks after this and we actually really perfected the end result. There still was a little bit more tweaking that we had to do, but Overall, this was a great first session. She loved it and she is on a maintenance schedule now for every six weeks. And basically what I wanna get her to is just being able to do a color melt of that 9A into that demi-permanent every other time. So we're not having to do highlights every single appointment. And here is a little side-by-side. -side. It's not my traditional side-by-side, -side, but at least you get the idea. Look at the huge difference. I'm gonna put all of the details to everything we did down below in the description. So I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. Be sure to head on over to morellaminelli.com so you can sign up for my newsletter so you can get free education sent right to your inbox. If there was something in this video that you really loved, you had an aha moment, or maybe you just simply want to tell me you hate it, you love it, whatever it is, make sure you comment down below and I'll be sure to respond. If you want some more behind the scenes videos of what goes on with making these YouTube videos, or maybe you want early access to some of the YouTube videos before they're launched to the public, you can also join my YouTube membership site right here on this channel. There are so many different ways that you can work with me, so make sure you head on over to my website and all of the links to everything that I just mentioned, plus so much more, is down below. And finally, be sure to check out my other hair tutorials right here on this channel, and I will see you in the next video.